I think we may have slightly bored the cat in our previous video. So now it's time for us to host our own Zoom meeting. Welcome back to Guys Guides, where I try my best to make technology and the online world as simple and easy as possible by providing simple tech tips and walkthrough guides to show you some of the amazing tools that we have out there. In the previous video, we looked at how you can join a Zoom meeting that someone else around you has set up and sent you an invitation. We went through how to download the app, we went through the basic functionalities of Zoom and most of all, how to join the meeting so that we can all have those wonderful online conversations whilst that social interaction is missing from our usual coffee or tea parties or book clubs or whatever it is. Now we're really going to have a look at how you yourself can host a Zoom online meeting so that you can invite others. First of all, by looking at how you can create your own account, then how you can host a meeting by scheduling it for a later date, and finally, how you can host a meeting on the spot so that say you fancy joining one of your friends or family for a quick chat, but you don't want to be on the phone because you want to be able to see the person or you want to see what they want to show you. Well, we'll show you exactly how to create a meeting that anybody can join straight away. Come on, let's crack on. The first thing that we need to do in order to host our first ever Zoom meeting is to go onto the Zoom website to create our account. So I type into Google Zoom and the first thing that comes up is the, the Zoom website. When I'm on the Zoom website, I need to sign up. And as you can see up here, it's completely free to sign up to Zoom. There are pay versions which allow you to do more things, but the first meeting that you host, the free version is completely fine to use. So I click on sign up, it's free. And this will ask me for my date of birth, first of all so that they can check that I'm over 18 years old to create an account. So I put in my date of birth and I click continue. The next thing to do is enter your own email address. So I'm just going to type in my email address and see Google recognizes my email address so I don't have to type it all in. I click on it and it pops up. Then I click sign up. They have now sent me an email so that I can validate my account. So I need to go back into my email account and check for the email from Zoom. As you can see here, I've received it. So I click on it and it's asking me to activate my account by clicking on the link here. They then ask me for my name, surname and a password that suits their criteria. So we need at least eight characters one lowercase letter and one uppercase letter and at least one number. It's always better to use different passwords on different websites to make it harder for people who want to do bad things. Once I'm done there, I say that I'm not signing up on behalf of a primary or a secondary institution, so no, and I click continue. Here I can invite other friends to join Zoom. So I can type in their email address here or if not, I can just click skip this step. And now my account is ready. So the next thing I'm going to do is go to my own account to show you a couple of things that happen within your account. So here we see my main details. But the next thing that we wanted to do is to see how we schedule our first meeting. Say we're setting up a tea party for next week with our friends. We'd like to schedule that meeting for four o'clock next Thursday. So I click up here on schedule a meeting. The first thing is to enter a title so that people know what my meeting is about. You can also enter a description, but you don't have to. If you've told someone about it on the phone, they may not need to know what the description of the meeting is. Then I click here to find a date. So I can click here. Oh, I think I need to click here. And yes, a calendar pops up. So I said next Thursday. So I look on Thursday and I see that that's the 28th of January. And so I click on the 28th of January. What time did we say? 4 p.m. So I'm just going to search for four and check that it is saying p.m. The duration can be changed here. 
But do be aware that if you're using a free account, you can only do meetings of up to 40 minutes if there are more than three people on the call. If there are only two of you, you can do longer than 40 minutes. Make sure that you select the right time zone so that the time is translated correctly for the person that you are inviting. So here, I'm just going to make sure that I select London. I can't find London and it's a very long list. So I'm just gonna start typing London. And there we go, it finds London for me and I can just click on London. It's not a recurring meeting. We can generate automatically the meeting ID and we want a security passcode so that people who shouldn't be joining the meeting aren't able to join. Now here you'll notice that there's an option waiting room. This is what we discussed in the previous video where the cat wouldn't let me into the meeting. So you can select this if you want to create a waiting room so that you accept people into the meeting so that people don't arrive early, for example, or can't join before you. So we can either check that box or not, depending on what I want. I don't want a waiting room because I don't want people to have the hassle of having to wait for me to accept it. And I don't personally want to have to accept people into the meeting. Everyone just joins whenever they want because we're all here to enjoy a good old cup of tea. I can choose whether the video is on or off for both myself, the host, and the participants. I want everyone to have their video on, first of all, to make it easier for people so that they don't have to turn on their video. And just because we're having a tea party and the aim is to be able to see people. I can then choose different meeting options. I don't want to mute participants upon entry because we're here to have conversations. I can allow participants to join any time, yes. Automatically record the meeting, I don't need to record my tea party and approve or block entry for users from specific countries or regions. Well, that could be useful, but no, I don't need it at this point because I've put a passcode on. So it means that the only people that will be able to join are the people who I've invited. I then click on save. And that is my meeting scheduled. However, now I need to invite people. So how do I do that? Well, I see down here that I can copy the invitation so I click on copy the invitation and this shows me the details of the Zoom party. If I click on copy meeting invitation, that will copy the text. And now I need to go and create an email to send it to my friends that I want to invite to my Zoom tea party. So I'm going to invite David and Margaret. and I'm going to say Zoom Tea Party. And then I need to paste the information that I just copied into my email so that people have the information. So I right click and then click paste. This will paste it in and there we go. We have all of the information that is needed for them to be able to join, including the link which they can then click on like we did in the previous video to access the meeting and join us for the tea party. I can also add some more information if I wanted to. And then I click on send. So I've scheduled my first Zoom meeting for my tea party. The invitees have received their information. Now let's zoom forward to next Thursday to show you exactly how you start that meeting. Now remember, I scheduled it. So that means that my scheduled meeting is ready to be started. I can click here on the meetings button so that I can see all of the meetings that are upcoming or that I've already joined. As you see here, I've got one that says tea party with friends, which is the one that I set up. And so now all that I need to do is simply click on the start button. As in the previous video, we just click on open zoom and there we go, we're in. Now, all that we need is for our invitees to join us. And don't forget to click join with computer audio so that everyone can hear you. So now we've seen how to create your own Zoom account, schedule your first Zoom meeting and start that Zoom meeting. 
But imagine you wanted to set up a quick meeting right now so that you can join a friend or a member of your family to have a quick discussion about the food that you're making for Sunday lunch. Now we can do that too without having to schedule a meeting but rather just start a meeting right now on the spot. We can do that by going back into our account and simply clicking up here on host a meeting. We can choose whether to have the video on or off and then it just opens Zoom automatically. Same thing as usual, we wait for Zoom to load and the meeting will then be started so that others can join. I join with computer audio but now I'm on my own in this meeting and I need to work out how to invite people. Well, if I scroll my mouse down to the bottom, I see a thing here called participants and when I click on that, I can see a button down here called invite. Now when I click on invite, I can either choose the email service that I want to use. The other way of doing it is by clicking on copy invitation. If I copy the invitation, it will copy it like previously so that then I can paste it into an email or however I want to send it to someone. So there you go on how to create your Zoom account in order to be able to host your first Zoom meeting either by scheduling it for the future or by hosting it straight away so that you can join whoever you would like to talk to and see at the same time. We did all that on our computer by using the Zoom website in order to do it. But it may be that you prefer using an iPad or a tablet in which case you may be interested in how the app works so that you can use Zoom in the same way but right from the app on your iPad. So why don't you join us in the next video where we're going to cover exactly how to use the Zoom app to do exactly the same things. If you have any particular questions or comments or wish to know more about the advanced functionalities of Zoom, do let us know in the comments and we can always think about making another Guy's Guides on the advanced functionalities of Zoom. Thanks so much for watching and join us in the next video if you're an iPad or a tablet user.